Hello and welcome back YouTube. So it's still Tuesday morning. I'm trying to get the time to come up. Uh, 8.24 a.m. July 18th. And um, wow, um, so much has happened beyond just breakfast over at St. Vincent de Paul. By the way, breakfast was great. Not much to it. Um, just a plate of biscuits and gravy. <coughs> Three biscuits instead of the usual two. I like biscuits and gravy. So, uh, yeah, no complaints there at all. I'm trying to figure out what lane I was supposed to be in. It looked like they used to they used to have two left turn only lanes, but then it looked like they now that's weird. I can look behind me and see the left turn arrow in the lane, but as I was approaching it, and maybe it was just the angle of the sun, it looked like it used to be there but had been ground away. That was uh, that was odd. Anyway, I just got myself in the leftmost lane because there's no sign that says I can't turn left here. And if I did my usual of going up to Van Buren, there's very much a sign that says I can't turn left onto 7th Avenue from there. So, um, yeah, I make that mistake almost every day and then end up kind of zigzagging through the neighborhood and, and going out in a different direction when I would like to just get on I-10 from 7th Avenue. So, oh goodness, and the AC is already, already given up on me. And that's just because there's air. There's no airflow through the condenser. As soon as I start moving, I'm sure it'll be fine. As I drive two blocks and hit another red light at Van Buren. Jay Walker walking over to the Friendship Inn. Nope, he's just trying to get the other side of 7th Avenue. So I've got a lot of good news and right now I kind of feel like I'm melting. So um, I kind of feel like I'm melting. So it's hard to concentrate and uh, get all that out. And I'm just waiting to get in enough motion that I can have effective air conditioning in because it is. Um, since I left my car, the sun has come out. There was some cloud cover that was making it a lot more mild as I was walking over to St. Vincent de Paul and, you know, over to the Human Services campus. But, um, but yeah, since coming out of the, um, coming out of the dining room, it, it's got noticeably much hotter and I'm sweating like crazy and, uh, and yeah, the sun is much brighter than it was when I parked my car. But at least I knew to park under that tree. So at least it shaded the inside of my car. That's a good thing. I'm pretty sure I'll make it onto I-10 without having to worry about overheating. Well, I wonder what that building is on the left. It says Studio. It looks like it's a Studio A. A is blocked by a tree. Yeah, I can see it now. It's a Studio A. It has a really cool looking mural of a guy holding two fists up. Two fists up with tattoos across his knuckles. Wonder if that's a recording studio. So, uh, speaking of recording studios, I've noticed that uh, Set Moses is, is no longer in the location that he was over by Pruitt's Furniture. And I'm pretty disappointed about that, but I don't know, all my attempts to kind of reach out to him never got responded to, so... I guess, you know, when him and I cross paths again, we'll cross paths again, but it's nothing I'm too critically worried about. Although that one time I went in there and sang karaoke, he was absolutely blown away by my voice. I was like, how do you feel about doing hooks on hip-hop songs? I'm like, I fucking love to do hooks on hip-hop songs. But, um, 
I guess that's something that's not meant to be. <laughs> but anyway, wow, I'm hitting way more traffic here than I was expecting. And I really should have looked at the traffic view on Obama Phone 5 on, uh, on Google Maps before getting in here. Temperature gauge still looks like it's where it's supposed to be, luckily. But yes. Ooh, yeah, there's an accent or something out of here. So there's these, these, these lights above the entrance to the deck park tunnel. And normally they just always are green. And, and you know, they don't use standard signals, so not sure what it's exactly they're supposed to mean, but um, and they're kind of hard to see too, especially with the sun coming up above them. But I'm seeing one on the right that's a red X. Normally it's just like green little green X's or it's green. It's kind of the point I never even look up at them because they're just never share any kind of valuable information that I've ever noticed. But looking up now, I see a, a red X and then a little bit further over, I see another red X and I see a yellow X. And uh, yeah, that's not good. I'm gonna open the windows, I'm cooking in here. Oh man, we got the A dot. Oh man, I should have been listening to KTAR, Detour Dan probably got, could have, could have. I'm sure he would have mentioned this sometime between when I got in my car and when I got here. Yeah, there are two, two red X's and a yellow X. So I got the feeling there's probably an accident right ahead of me. Yeah, I will not be turning on my AC as I just hope. Hopefully y'all can hear me. This tunnel is loud with the windows open, but it was just getting too incredibly hot. Too incredibly hot with them closed without being able to come up here. Oh shit, my temperature gauge is starting to climb now. thinks it's okay to drive in the shoulder. He's about to... I think he's about to be stopped for that. Wow. I love how some people are so selfish and in a hurry that they just make up their own lanes. my arm out the window, there's airflow in the tunnel. It feels really good. That's something. I have no idea what my temperature gauge is at now. Even though it's an analog gauge, it's an electric gauge. And uh, yeah, when I turn the car on, it takes a while for it to actually register. Yeah, it's climbing. Looks like I'm gonna be able to get out and around though. Thank you, thank you, Parker and Sons. Good to know that, uh, that that's not Melvin. Oh, that, that white truck is smashed in in the smashed in in the front. I saw another truck smashed in in the front. Commander Produce van smashed in in the back. That guy smashed in in the front. Oh, there must have been a hell of a vendor bender a hell of a pile up in the tunnel. You know, so many Phoenix drivers just think it's okay to drive just crazy fast into tailgate. And uh, yeah, that's what that's what happens. All it takes is one person to hit his brakes and one person to not be pay, paying attention while he's tailgating. And you got a whole bunch of crunched up cars in the tunnel. Well, I will say the crew looks the crew looks like they're working their asses off to get everybody out of the way. So I'm assuming that that truck that was blocking the second lane out is probably uh, probably not drivable. So you need to get a truck there to haul it up. Anyway, finally at freeway speed. 
actually kind of glad I went through that. Uh, that was that was interesting. And that's backing up the flow enough that it's just smooth sailing and should be smooth sailing all the way home from here. So now I can finally get to what I was wanting to talk about. <laughs> um, so, uh, as I said, breakfast was pleasant. I uh, had breakfast with an older, presumably homeless woman named Liz, who was very personable, although probably a little, a little crazy, which is fine, because so am I. the most attractive woman, but I'm not going to lie, I would love to see her topless. <laughs> as, as it was, she wasn't wearing a, wasn't wearing a bra, bra and uh, the lights were on. Not sure why, maybe they're just, maybe they're just big, but anyway, um, I need to get that image out of my mind, but it might take a little while. Um, wow, there's somebody over, vehicle over on, on the landscaping in the Gore area. So, anyway, she, she went on this interesting, just out of nowhere, she just like lit up at me and she goes, how do you feel about President Obama? <laughs> and I'm not trying to have a political discussion in there. So, you know, I said, uh, I forget exactly what it said, but I came, I came with something positive and something non-political and I said, uh, I'll tell you, I'm a great speaker. You feel about the man's politics. He's a hell of a great speaker, and you really can't take that away from him. <laughs> Unlike the current potato. But anyway, she went on this this wild tangent about about his genealogy and how his mother is actually black. And I don't know if there's any basis for it all, but it was it was certainly entertaining. And I just went ahead and let her just kind of nodded and said, man, well, interesting, several times. <laughs> and she just seemed, this just seemed so happy to share that, so. And, and I think of how many people probably just kind of nod while I'm going off about things that they <laughs> are not all that particularly interested in, be it, be it karaoke or traffic light poles or how things are palletized at Amazon or how traffic intersections could be improved and so on and so forth. And uh, so kind of it was it was it was actually kind of amusing to be on the other end of that. And she was a sweetheart. I hope I see her again. I really do. Um also stood in line with a rather interesting guy, a Mexican guy, but he had fluent English and and told him my good news. He was the first person I got to tell my good news. And that is, I finally have a start date for a full-time job. Because I've been hired by, what, five, six? That have not got back to me, to the point I've kind of just given up. Uh, so it turns out it was worth my while to go back to the rental car center. And the very attractive black woman that I talked to there that I didn't think I had seen before, but I'm not 100% on that, um, that I was talking to about Winolo, and she popped up in her Winolo app. She told me, maybe about a block after I left my car, heading over to St. Vincent de Paul, she called me and, you know, asked if I had any other commitments, which of course I do. Um, and wanted to know if I can come in for training tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Now, I am working tonight at I am working tonight at Restaurant Depot, and it's too late for me to quit that without um, without a penalty, and I'm not about getting any kind of penalties right now. I've got an absolutely perfect rating with Winolo, and I'd like to keep that. But, um, I told her yes. Am I burning the candle at both ends right now? Oh, hell yeah. But I'm... I'm gonna get through this. You know, it wasn't that many weeks ago. I, I, I was, 
I was just ready to give up completely. In fact, in some ways in my head, I, I had given up completely. And, and I wonder what I would have done had my friend over at Osbar not kicked me down $300 to make sure I could pay my rent this month. I, I, I don't really know what I would have, have done because I, I without that, it wouldn't have... Uh, I wonder what this guy's waiting for. Apparently having some car issues. It's it's all right. It's that's been me more than a few times. So. So. Um, Dang, that made me lose my whole train of thought. But I'm almost home, so... Oh, there just the transmission doing its thing. Yikes. Um, oh, the air feels so nice and cool right now. I'm almost home. Can't wait to crank that thermostat down to 60... Or 70, 65, no. Oh my gosh. My, so I was chatting with my mother yesterday while I was having... Uh, Oh, when I was when I was waiting for the train, and I said that that my phone was going off, and I expected it was Priscilla texting me. Come to find out, it was actually my mother, and told me that my sister keeps the thermostat at her house at like 68 degrees. Yikes! Sorry, that's just not even remotely comfortable to me. That's just yikes. Um, she said that, yeah, it wasn't wasn't so much for her that she had to bundle up with sweaters. She didn't particularly like it. But but anyway, gosh, there was so much more I wanted to say about what all happened. So I guess I should at least at least say what job finally contacted me back. Well, I guess I kind of did. The the rental car center. And of all the jobs that I was hired for, it's the lowest paying. It's only 15 bucks an hour, but you know what? Some Winolo on the side, I'll be all right. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable, I'll be all right. And it sounds like a pleasant job. It's certainly one that if my transmission fails me, which I'm kind of worried it might, that I can easily get to without this car. And, and it seems like it'll be a fun job and something that's not so physically demanding like a lot of the other jobs I've been doing. Um, it's just going to be moving, from what I understand, it's just going to simply be moving cars around from point A to point B. I'm not sure where point A and point B is going to be and what all needs to be done. Uh, but um, training is tomorrow, so I'll find out. I will say one thing I have definitely noticed of all the times I've walked down there, and of course I always sh shut my phone off if recording because I'm entering private property and, you know, yeah, as a general policy, I try not to not to record when I'm walking through private property, especially, uh, you know, not not publicly accessible private property, not to be confused with strip mall parking lots. That's a whole other thing, um, especially when um, especially when uh, it's a place I'm hoping to get hired at. But um uh, but anyway, when I when I go through that lot there on the other side of the guard check, which I'm assuming is all the vehicles they're moving around, what I mostly see a lot of, that's my other phones. I'm sure I just connected to my Wi-Fi, so I'm getting notices on everything. Um, what I'm no mostly seeing a lot of is Teslas. So, um, I mean, don't get me wrong. I would rather get something where I'm paid $20, $21 an hour um, to operate a forklift, but 15, uh, mile, uh, $15 an hour to move Tesla's around. Sounds like fun in my book. Um, anyway, I had a couple of things I wanted to talk about. Um, and I can say those for another time, but I did see hands down the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in the zone so far. And, uh, hopefully I'll have time to talk about that in the next video. Thanks for watching.